everything about Faramir. Man, was this a wasted opportunity. So, Faramir, brother of Boromir. In the book, Faramir finds out that Frodo has the ring, and he seems to toy with him a little bit. So that is the answer to all the riddles. The one ring that was thought to have perished from the world. And Boromir tried to take it by force, and you escaped, and ran all the way to me. And here in the wild I have you, two halflings, and a host of men at my call, and the ring of rings, a pretty stroke of fortune. A chance for Faramir, captain of Gondor, to show his quality. Ha! And then... He doesn't take the ring. Not if he found it on the highway would he take it. Faramir recognizes Boromir's flaw and avoids repeating his mistake. It is the single most badass thing a human man does in Lord of the Rings. In a single moment, Faramir shows his quality. It's a small moment that gives so much hope to the world. If a man can resist the evil of the ring, Maybe the time of the elves passing and men becoming the dominant race won't be so completely terrible after all. So, you know, can't have that in the movie. I came on the project not having read the book. The script had been written, um, so that was the Faramir that I knew. Then I read the book and I saw that there was a major difference between the, the script and the book. The ring will go to Gondor. <laughs> hate it, hate it, hate everything about it. Where do I even begin on how much I hate this change? First off, they set everything up for you to expect this, especially in the extended edition where they delve into the Steward of Gondor family backstory. Everything is building to the moment where Faramir is given this opportunity, and everything is telling you that if he had the ring, he would take it like Boromir tried to. So what a perfect, memorable piece of filmmaking it would be to subvert that expectation to give him a moment of strength instead. So it's wild that the movie treats this like it is a subversion, with Sam reacting with surprise to Faramir's decision, but it's only a subversion to people who have read the book who, by and large, are not going to be happy about this change. For people who are coming in blind to the movie, they're expecting the big guy to take the ring from Frodo, and then they got what they expected. No subversion happening, just spending several minutes hinting that something's gonna happen, and then that thing happens. Weirdly diminishes the ring's power if Faramir can so readily resist its lure. Mm. That was one of the strong thoughts we had. Okay, two things. First off, you didn't seem to have that concern when you wrote a brand new scene to give stupid sexy Aragorn the same challenge at the end of the movie. I would have gone with you to the end. Oh look, he overcame Isildur's weakness. That means his arc is over now, right? Second off, if you're trying to show the power the ring has over people, I do not think you succeeded. I think you showed the power Denethor has over Faramir. Well, the fact that Faramir is immediately opposed to taking the ring in the book as a Opposed to where in the movie he it's a it's a long drawn out decision that he has to make and ultimately his first inclination is to take the ring and that changed because we the focus suddenly became his relationship to his father Faramir's not doing this because of the ring's temptation he just has to prove himself to his neglectful father he's not succumbing to the power of the ring it just feels like him succumbing to his daddy issues once we knew very on, very early on that we weren't going to be able to fit Shelob into film two that decision was made very early on we needed to drive Frodo and Sam's story towards some kind of climax for all those people that sort of have a problem with this, I think you just need to play out the story in your mind without this sequence for Frodo and Sam. Okay, but there still could have been a different climax to this through line, you know? Maybe Faramir's camp gets attacked and he has to fight alongside the hobbits. Maybe he leads them down another path and gets ambushed so they have to go with Gollum again. Maybe somebody else in Faramir's company tries to take the ring and Faramir has to rescue Frodo from the turncoat. There were alternate solutions. You didn't have to completely engage in full-on character assassination. It's so wrong. <laughs> By rights, we shouldn't even be here. Faramir's whole family gets some sketchy treatment in the movies. Boromir comes off best, but they still amp up the sinister moments in a way that sometimes makes him feel less like a man corrupted and 
more like a bad guy who's good at hiding it sometimes. And Denethor definitely takes a downgrade in dignity, but at least when it happens to him, it's hilarious. Ibrahim? Perhaps it's a good thing I got cut. Did you see what they did to my in-laws? Not pretty. Thank you.